The 2020 U.S. presidential election has put renewed focus on demographic shifts. With the rising number of ethnic and racial minority populations, there is now a growing population that hadn't been accounted for until now. So what does this mean for U.S. election 2020? Here's a report. Twenty twenty is a year of many firsts, and in America, twenty twenty is the year of first time voters. Major social movements driven by young activists around climate change, gun safety, and Black Lives Matter have led to an explosion of civic awareness among younger Americans. Wake up, wake up. Now the millennials and Generation Z are on track to turn out to vote in record numbers. And the analysts believe that this could play a pivotal role in the battleground states. Data on early voters and recent polling suggest eligible voters under 30 could break their historic 2008 turnout. It peaked at 48% when Barack Obama was elected as the president. A higher early turnout is expected given the particularly low turnout by young voters in 2016, and also on the overall surge in interest in alternative voting options because of the pandemic. As Americans whose formative years were shaped by national trauma, this generation is ripe for heightened civic awareness. Born a few years before 9-11 and grew up during the 2008 Great Recession, Wall Street protests and economic inequality. I want to be able to do my part the way that I can. Um, and so I'm like, I'm going to go out and brave the polls. Since last presidential election, an estimated 800,000 young Latino Americans have turned 18. We need to get out and vote. It's so crucial, the young Latino voter, so crucial. We need to show the third generation why the Latino vote is so important. The 32 million up for grabs Hispanic voters could tilt this election. For the first time, Hispanics are the largest racial or ethnic minority group in an electorate with over 13% eligible voters, which is slightly more than black voters. Low employment rates, gun rights and law and order are some of the issues faced by the Latinos in several regions. Having my family come from Bolivia, it's very important to me to know that immigrants are being protected by whoever the current president is. Um, and personally, I do have friends who are affected by DACA. So making sure that they are, their rights are being heard is, is an important part of why I'm voting for Biden and Kamala Harris. Trends show that Biden is leading among the Hispanic voters with 53 percent, while Trump is trailing with 30 percent. If Biden campaign fails to make up that ground, it could prove disastrous in closely contested states with significant Latino populations. A group of progressive voters are rallying behind the message to settle for Biden and are encouraging other progressive voters to do the same. In the back, stock is How? By driving a ridiculous van while they record social media videos. In 2016, I didn't vote. Um, I thought that I didn't wasn't necessary, that it really doesn't affect my everyday life. And uh, I was registered to vote in Pennsylvania. Uh, I'm an independent. I don't consider myself uh, a Democrat or a Republican, but I do consider myself left-leaning or more progressive. Um, and I was shocked that Donald Trump won. And I, and I didn't vote, so I feel very responsible for that. The social media push has been targeted toward youngsters and typically unlikely voters. And perhaps it has proved to be a good way to make Biden look palatable. And in 2016, I voted third party because I was, uh, it was a protest vote. I didn't like how the media treated Bernie Sanders. And I thought that, you know, I felt comfortable that Hillary Clinton would win and I could use it, make a protest vote. 
And I ended up really regretting that decision because Minnesota came within a couple ten thousands of votes that uh, Trump could have won my state. US election days, we on, world is one.